of those beliefs can get set right then and there, and they're in your field constantly broadcasting at you. And what this biofield tuning does is we go into the biofield and we find a perturbation and we hold the fork in that perturbation until that energy gets released. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hi, and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. It's Rick Nusky. I'm your host, and on today's call, I'm with the wonderful Sue Wilhite. How are you, Sue? I'm doing great, Rick. Thank you. No, not a problem at all. It's wonderful to have you here. Now, Sue and I were just talking briefly a little bit about her background, and um, we're going to be deep diving into sound and how it can re- help you reduce stress, and in particular, um, how you can uh, use sound and the relaxation uh, processes that Sue is going to talk about in your business. So, Sue, before we jump into that, I was wondering if you could share a little bit with the My Future Business audience about the things you like to do when you're not at work. Uh, Well, if you could see the room that I'm in right now, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bookcases in this room alone. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I love to read. Uh, I've been reading since I was three and fiction, nonfiction, mostly science fiction and fantasy, I admit, Um, but mystery, uh, biography, historical fiction, if it's got two covers and some words, I'll probably pick it up and read it. Are you are you a hardback type person normally, or do you like audio books as well? Uh, I'm usually a physical or ebook. I've converted a lot to ebook recently because we moved about three years ago, and hauling seventy five boxes of Uh-oh. books around 70, really converted 75 into ebook. Bo- seventy five boxes. Yes. <laughs> Goodness me. Well, there you go. Everybody's on the show today. That's a bit of an indication of how much reading that Sue actually does. Now, Sue, um, uh, a little bit further back, um, I'd, I'd love to explore your, um, to give some context of the call, your previous experiences in the workplace. What, what was it that you used to do? I used to be in what they used to call MIS and what they now call IT. So I was in management information systems. And I developed uh, programs, I did database design, I did operations for various manufacturing companies, as it turned out, um, and one non-manufacturing services company uh, that uh, supported the company. And so I got to learn business from the inside out. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? Because nowadays, if you fast forward to the, I guess, the 21st century, and here we are today, um, sharing some some time together on the on the show, it just just goes to show how important technology has become in our everyday lives. What have you, what have you seen in in the uh, I guess the progress of technology that's really impressed you? Oh my goodness! So, in one of my first jobs, I got to go to one of the first personal computing. Uh, conferences ever in Mm -hmm. San Francisco. And I got to see Steve Jobs demonstrating the Lisa, which was a precursor to the Mac. And now we have smartphones. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's amazing to me that we used to have these, these computers that would fill rooms. Yes, literally. and, And now... You know, we've got these these smartphones. I mean, we're getting bigger uh, form factors in smartphones simply to be able to read what we have on the screen. But but really, technically, we could shrink those down to the size of your palm. Yes. And it's so amazing. The amount of computing power we have right now is stunning. Just stunning. Yes, it's, it is amazing. I, I wonder, you know, what the next step is, to be quite frank with you. Is it chips? Is it, uh, you know, is it uh, some sort of other technology that we're not aware of yet? The, I guess the world is our oyster in this respect now. Speaking about the world and the, the oyster that we have here, um, we're going through some interesting times in the world. And, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of um, 
stress. We've talked about this a little earlier about in the show how we can uh, reduce stress through some of the techniques that you're going to share with us, Sue. But I think um, because the world is in such a, a spot at the moment with everything that's happening, I'm wondering, um, you know, are you feeling this because you're so attuned to sound and how it works and how is it affecting you personally, Sue? Well, I go through ups and downs, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. I have been doing stress management and helping people with stress management since the early 90s. And so I've, you know, I learned to meditate. I, I learned hypnosis. I learned NLP. I learned EFT. I do sound healing now. I know all of these techniques. Yeah. And yet... Every so often, I go, oh, my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> 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 and the trick is to do that, really, is yeah. to go ahead, give yourself a minute of having an absolute tizzy, break down, scream, cry, stomp your feet, throw soft things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't break anything. You need to slam a door, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then go, okay, well, that got it out of my system. Now I'm going to start concentrating on my breathing. I'm going to let my brain calm down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a little bit of mini meditation and allow myself to get into the now because now quite literally both from a metaphysical and a quantum physics viewpoint is all we got. Yeah, this, this reminds me of an author of a, a wonderful book that was about six, uh, six and a half hours of an audio book. Um, oh, now, I think it was called? Oh, The Power of Now. Yes, The Power of Now. Yes, Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart yes. Tolle, of course. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, I, I like to um, bring it into real world examples here because we know that on the My Future Business Show, we have entrepreneurs and we have uh, smaller, medium-sized business owners listening into the show, um, and we provide a lot of value to that particular uh, segment. So I, I wonder, given the um, mass layoffs and the things that are going around the world right now, you've talked about not suppressing your initial feelings, then going into techniques. I wonder, being the profit attraction mentor that you are as well, how you combine um, your, your work with sound and being that profit attraction mentor, how does that all work? Oh, Thank you for asking that. that that's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> so after, after I uh, quit being in IT, mm -hmm. I went off and I was doing uh, hypnotherapy for people for a long time. And I was helping people learn how to ca be calmer, learn how to quit smoking, how to control their weight, control emotions, doing all of that stuff. And I kept getting clients who were either just about to quit their, their jobs, wanting to form businesses, wanting to be in that. And from my background, as I said, supporting businesses from the inside out and also being a part of the business community. I joined Jam Chambers of Commerce. I joined networking groups. I learned everything I could about business. I ended up being a business coach as yeah. well as a hypnotherapist. And what I do now is I help business owners who are not being as successful as they want to be figure out what it is that's getting in their way. And I use a variety of sound healing techniques to clear, pardon my French, clear the crap <laughs> out of there so that they can be successful. So they're not hobbling themselves in their path to success and i love doing it it's just it's so miraculous when it happens i i always like to um tie it back sue to real world example i'd love to talk about that uh, i guess that one experience that you've had with a client where it was transformational for them i was wondering if you could share a little bit about that with us yeah absolutely so one of my clients uh was um, i'm i'm on the fly, sort of changing things to protect the innocent, as yep. it were. Okay. <laughs> uh, one of my clients was someone who uh, had wanted to be, he wanted to break off and um, uh, form his own business. He wanted to, to quit the corporate, corporate world 
and form his own business. And he wanted to be a, a consultant. But he kept not doing it. And he kept not doing it. And he kept not doing it. And he came to me because he was experiencing a lot of stress on his job. And that was really what he had come to me for. And as we were talking, it was like, oh, well, you want to be in business. Well, you've got these great ideas. What, what seems to be the problem? And he's going, I, I, I don't know. Well, he came back a little while later, and he said he was going to go hiking in Yosemite. And he wanted me to help him with his fear of heights. And I went, oh, okay. And so we went through a, a routine where we cleared, we were clearing his fear of heights. And all of a sudden, as, as we were clearing this fear of heights using these techniques, he suddenly went, it's not heights I'm afraid of. It's being CEO. It's being at the top of my game. It's being important. That's what I'm afraid of. It's funny because oftentimes we uh, do tend to hide our true fears, don't we? Right. And, and as soon as he got that, he was able to just go to his, go to his boss and say, you know what, I'm going to be going in about six months. Um, you know, I'll train my replacement, but I'm going to be building my business on the side. So my schedule is going to change. If you don't like it, I'll walk now. But if you want to keep me around for six months, let's do that. And he negotiated with his boss to do that for six months. You know, I guess that he's almost given himself permission to to be, uh, I guess, bigger and better than what he has been now. I think that's important because you talk about in your bio, uh, the permission to profit. I was wondering if we can uh, talk about that for a little moment. Yes, well, he's, he's a great example of that because a lot of people don't have permission to make money. And I think that a lot of things that are going on in the world today mm -hmm. about people who have money versus people who don't, mm -hmm set up this horrifying dichotomy and this horrifying avoidance of wanting to make money because people look at folks who are behaving badly who happen to have money and saying, oh, I don't want to get rich because, you know, rich people do bad things. And the deal is, is that poor people do equally bad things. <laughs> They're just not in the media. <laughs> Money is often, uh, I guess, mistaken for this evil, evil entity as such. It's exactly. It's, it, it's it's nothing more than the tool, is it, Sue? It's exactly. And one of my teachers says that money only makes you more of what you already are. And and if you're already, you know, a a nasty human being who is selfish and greedy and wants to, you know, stab the backs of others, and you're going to do that whether you have money or not. It's reinforcement, isn't it? I wonder, Sue, with your process, your sound process and the work that you do as a coach and a mentor, do you find it, is it possible for people like that to unlearn those behaviours and take a different path? Absolutely. Yeah. So one of the sound healing techniques that I use is something called biofield tuning. And biofield tuning was invented by a wonderful, brilliant woman named Eileen McCusick who, through a series of experimentation and testing, determined that we are all vibration, first off, which is not a particularly big surprise, mm -hmm. uh, but our vibration extends in what's called the biofield. This is also not necessarily new information, but we've got this biofield that's an electromagnetic field that extends about three to four feet in every direction around us. It's like this big bubble that we're wandering around in. Mm -hmm. And the thing that she discovered was just like an old fashioned LP, a vinyl record, our experiences are recorded in our biofield. And some of those experiences get written in such that we can, we can never ex escape that that what I call a kerfluffle, uh, which she calls a perturbation <laughs> in our field. Yeah. There's, there's energy that gets bound up. And 
no matter what we do, I mean, you can do affirmations and that will eventually untangle the perturbation. It will un undo the kerfluffle, but that takes forever. It yeah. takes a really long time of trying to smooth that out. What sound does is it does it much faster, easier, to my mind, more effectively, and it gets rid of it all the way down the line and releases that stuck energy that you might have. Now, could I give you an example of something like that? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So let's say, um, Rick, do you have any siblings? I do. You do. So are you older or younger than they are? I'm the eldest. You're the oldest. Not necessarily okay. the wisest, but the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Let's say that one of your younger siblings, when you were both fairly small, broke something of yours that you were very fond of. Okay. <laughs> I've got one particular First memory all, coming back. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, that's that's an emotional thing, right? There's yep. going to be, it, it was something that you loved, that you were attached to, and your sibling broke it. That is, on one level, a betrayal. Whether they, and, and if they meant it, that's even more so. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this right, particular instance, kids, not, not so much, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> little kids will do that. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. They'll, they'll just go, oh, I'm going to get you back, smash. Um, <laughs> and, and they do things. So that's one level of betrayal, but you're not likely to hold on to that for a really long time. You might, but you're not likely to. Yeah. But let's add another level. Let's say that one or the other or both of your parents come in and they take the side of your sibling, was in the right for having broken that toy, and you need to just suck it up. That's a whole nother level of betrayal because your parents, no matter who you are, where you are, at what age, in your mind, your parents are supposed to support you. Because technically, and I forget where I first read this, it, 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 I read a lot of psychology stuff, so I apologize. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know where I got this from. Mm -hmm. But somebody said that in our minds, our parents are gods. And if the gods look on us with disfavor, it completely warps our worldview. So that emotional spike gets written in your biofield. Chances are good you think about it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, over and over again, right? Yeah. It's an emotional thing. They shouldn't have done that. He or she, whatever your sibling was, shouldn't have done that. That was bad. They don't love me anymore. Da, 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 da. There's a whole kerfluffle perturbation that gets locked into your field. And now... There's a whole range of things that can come out of that. People aren't to be trusted. You can't trust anybody in authority. You can't trust, um, you know, that I can't be attached to anything because it's going to be gone. Um, I, can't, I can't hold on to anything. All of those beliefs can get set right then and there, and they're in your field constantly broadcasting at you. And what this biofield tuning does is... It, we literally stick a fork in it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we, we use a special set of tuning forks and we, we go into the biofield and we find a perturbation and we hold the fork in that perturbation until that energy gets released. It, it sounds so simple, but yet I'm sure it's very powerful. I, I have a couple of questions, Sue. Um, yeah. when, we, when we look at ourselves as physical beings, um, and we know that a large part of our, ourselves is made of, of water. Um, mm -hmm. How important is, I guess, um, looking after our physical selves and how does it affect this energy field around us if we don't? Oh, goodness. Water is like the most important thing in, it, it, you can't, well, yes, you can drink enough water, uh, but yeah. <laughs> drinking water, partly because we are all electric. Everything is electricity. We are all electric beings. Mm -hmm. And everything in our body is an electrical process of some kind or another. It might be, you might call it a chemical process. The chemistry is nothing more than electrons being exchanged. Mm -hmm. And so 
the field, our biofield is also an electrical field. And the more water we drink, don't go lysing your cells now. Don't, don't go doing what that poor woman did <laughs> on the radio show. Don't go doing that. But the more hydrated that you can get, the more the chemical processes can work the best and the more the electricity flows. Also, being in salt water is hugely important for your, uh, for your emotional state, for your physical state. It's really um, a wonderful thing to be able to go swim in the ocean or go uh, soak in a, in a salt bath, an Epsom salts bath works. Um, I personally love flotation tanks um, just, to, just to float in salt water. It's, I live on the uh, Northern California coast, so getting in the ocean here is not the best idea. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> rip tides, freezing yes. water, yes, not yes. good. Yeah, not necessarily However, not necessarily conducive to a good time <laughs> yeah yeah it, it kind of goes to you know yes there's benefits but there's more harm than benefits so, <laughs> uh but but generally speaking getting into salt water is one of the better things that you can do for your for your body i wonder sue um when we get near somebody we've never met before could this explain why sometimes you feel I guess, put out by somebody, you can almost feel their energy is, is the statement I'd like to use. Is there some, yes. is there some relevance here? Is this, is this actually happening? This is actually happening. Yes. When your field comes into contact with somebody else's field and you get bad vibes. They're real. <laughs> then, yeah, that's real. You're feeling their perturbations. You're, they're, you're feeling how well their energy is flowing within their field. And if they've got a bunch of um, I guess we could call it hiccups or, or tight spaces in the field, they're broadcasting that all the time. And so, yes, you can definitely, you can definitely feel somebody else's vibe. Yes. And you can, you can see how this would be relevant in a, I guess, in a personal perspective, uh, relationships with loved ones, friends, family, as well as in the professional work sphere. Is this something that you talk about in, in your programs? Um, I don't necessarily talk about it in my programs, but if they're not as something that I have as a template that I address every time mm -hmm. and nobody works in a vacuum. No, it's all you different. Know, if you're, if you're in business, you're dealing with another, at least one other human being. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have to, you have to have a relationship. So a lot of the work that I end up doing is clearing stuff from early exposure to other human beings and the interactions between you and somebody else. Yeah, so you talk about here how you you know want to get your mojo back. This is essentially what I've just touched on inadvertently, isn't it? Yes, and and being able to be confident, being able to have, being able to own your own energy, being able to project that confidence and that knowingness into the world so that people can trust you so that whatever service it is you provide, people get it that you are sincere, that you're good, that you know what you're doing. I can't tell you how many business owners I see who are like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm a virtual assistant and I can help you to do anything. Uh, <laughs> downtrodden. Right. And it's like, yeah, what, what do you do? <laughs> um, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a, this has been a wonderful call. So I, I I'd love to talk a little bit about some of the other things that you're doing. Uh, you you do have some obviously um, speaking arrangements. Some um, tell us a little bit about um, how you deliver um, your wonderful services. Oh yes, yeah. so um, I do uh, workshops, um, uh, speaking engagements. I was just a keynote speaker for. Uh, the International Virtual Assistance Association. Mm -hmm. um, that was an enormous amount of fun. I do a, I did do it live. I'm going to be pivoting to doing it online. Uh, a talk that, that's called Sound Mind, Sound Body. Uh, that's all about sound healing and how that works. I also talk about the permission to profit. 
and I have five steps that are, uh, you know, be yourself, get off your butt, wear <laughs> <laughs> uh, the decks, uh, you know, shine, all of these things that are about how you show up in business and how to be the best person that you are. I'd love to um, explore, Sue, what a typical day looks like for you in terms of all of the um, skills that you have, the way you look after your body. What does a normal day look like for you? Well, I get up at somewhere between 3.30 and quarter to four in the morning. And I make myself a, a, a nice breakfast. I do a high protein breakfast mm -hmm. and green tea. And while I am doing that, I am meditating. Because one of the things that I discovered early on was that I do moving meditation. That's just the way that I'm set up. Mm -hmm. I don't do sitting meditation. Um, and, and I'm a big fan of figuring out what meditation works for you. And, um, and then I would be uh, looking at very briefly scanning uh, my emails. And then I am generally uh, writing, seeing customers um, who would be up that early, um, typically remotely. And then uh, at lunchtime, uh, if the weather is nice, it's beginning to get nice and I can do this. Um, I take my dog out in the backyard and uh, we, we run around the backyard together. Uh, I have a huge backyard and I go and talk to all of the fruit trees. The dog loves it. I love it. I get outside. I get to earth. I get to be with the planet. And then I'll come back and maybe I'll see clients in the afternoon. Sometimes I'm, I'm in the middle of a book project, a collaborative book pro project with about uh, 15 other women. Um, and uh, working on my chapter for that. I'm also doing some other writing for myself for some articles. Uh, researching speaking gigs. Yeah, my afternoon is pretty free form because I'm not one to stick to a schedule. Do you find that uh, in all of this busyness and, you know, being present, do you, do you find yourself reflecting on gratitude? Oh, goodness, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. You know, uh, particularly when I do my tree walk, and I'm going out and I'm talking to the trees and I'm, you know, right now it's spring, so it's wonderful. Um, our plum tree has already blossomed and is probably starting to grow fruit now. And so I'm going, hey, good fruit. This is great. Um, <laughs> bring it on. Our, bring it on. Uh, our apple trees are just finishing their flowering and I'm, you know, giving it the yay for that. We've got a tree that was told to us that it was an orange tree, but I'm beginning to think it's a lemon tree because the blossoms smell differently and the tree is looking different. Oh. And it's finally blossoming after three years that we've been here and it's never done a thing. Now blossoms are popping out all over and I'm grateful. I am so grateful. It's like, oh, thank you. Whenever I eat or whenever I drink, and especially now, I think, wow, you know, and this may sound like I'm, I'm do say, doom saying, but really I'm not. I, I drink water, I go to the refrigerator and we've got filtered water in the fridge and I go, okay, this might be the last time I can do this. You know, when I make breakfast, oh, this is the last egg I might taste. Okay, we're going to be really present with, really present with this now. You know, when I pat my dog or when I have my cat on my lap, it's, it's like, yes. Honey, you're it, you know, right here and now. This might be the last time. I think that's such wonderful feedback because you're very grounded. You are aware that, um, you know, being that we live in the now, we don't know how long our finite, uh, finite experience on this, uh, on this planet is. And we know that it is that, yeah. you know, there's only a couple of things that we can guarantee in life is that it's death and taxes. And we need to make <laughs> sure that we do everything that we can in the meantime, in between time. Now, importantly, Sue, um, when people want to connect with you, uh, where are they going to find you? Well, if they want to connect with me and work with me as a coach, uh, then they can go to the sweetsoundofsuccess.com website 
and there's a contact me page there. Um, and there's all kinds of wonderful things that you can sign up for. One of the things I have on there is an enlightenment session. So if you've got a business uh, or you're thinking about going into business, there's a 45 minute chat that we can have mm -hmm. totally free. And I'll just give you feedback on, on your business ideas. Um, if you want to hire me for a speaking gig or you want to talk to me about one of my workshops, then the website with my name on it is the one to go to, which is suewilhite.com. There you go. It doesn't get much easier than that. Now, I know that uh, when, you, when you get there, there will be a lot of information um, that you can go through to get a bit of a feel for some of the wonderful work that Sue is doing. Now, uh, as is normally the case for everybody who's on the call, uh, if you're looking for these links, just look, look below the post. You'll see actually two links. You'll see sweetsoundofsuccess.com as well as suewillheight.com. And also, when you travel around the My Future Business website, you'll see a number of banners that take you directly back to Sue as well. But Sue... I just have to say this has been just such a fantastic call spending some time with you on the My Future Business Show today. Well, thank you, Rick. I really appreciate it. This has been a really fun call. You've got great questions. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends, and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.